is going on guys? Apex RC here. We're here reviewing the 90 millimeter F22 Raptor. It is one of my favorite jets of all time uh, in the whole universe and all the lands and the oceans and the stars and the ships and the underground secret bases and the whole world. Uh, I did do a couple modifications to this, uh, mostly visual, no performance upgrades. Uh, the first one here is the golden canopy found on the real deal. See a good look there. <clears throat> uh, the way I achieved this is there's a website called Park Flyer Plastics and they sell one for like five dollars plus like you know some shipping or something and you have to buy it from that website because the one on motion is like a smoked color and they, it doesn't come in an actual clear. And what I did, or this is what it came, or what it looked like when it came, looks just like this. So it doesn't actually like look exactly like the one for the plane, you have to cut it out. You can see the line there where you're supposed to cut. But once you cut it, then it pretty much matches the exact uh, shape and size. And I painted the inside of it with this color here, the Tamiya uh, clear orange. And after that, I placed the painted canopy on top of the black canopy that came with the plane. Uh, I was gonna do just the orange canopy, but the orange canopy by itself looked kind of cartoony and too bright. It became more, like, more like a weird, like bright yellow color. But I ended up just putting the orange one on top of the smoked one and this is how it came out. I was pretty happy how, it, uh, how the end result was. So basically there's two canopies on there at the same time. Uh, some other modifications I have done is navigational lights on the wings there, the red and the green. And of course we have a whole new paint job I tried to go for that more darker metallic sheen kind of color that the more modern Raptors have. Along with the Strider 1 scheme on the tail there from Ace Combat 7. And you got the Ocean Air Force on the, the wing there. Uh, the paint that I used for the body is this color right here. It's Max Flex Phantom Hue took me a while to find that color there it took like probably three or four different trips to stores to try to find one that exact sack boo exactly mimics the more modern raptor look so you can kind of see how it reflects in the light there I'm really really happy the way this looks uh something else i did as well is i did little rivet dots on some of the panel lines here <clears throat> And I believe that's it. And of course, all most of the other decals are ones from the original F-22 uh, decal sheet from Motion. So all the other little, little details there from that. Um, how are the scale details from this out of the box? Uh, the original paint job uh, was pretty good, but I didn't like the really bright gray color because most of the F-22s you see uh, on the full scale versions uh, don't really look like that. They look more like this, which is why I went for this paint job. Uh, I was disappointed that they did not come with navigational lights, which I'm kind of surprised on a model like this, but it did come with the landing light, which was nice. It does go on and off uh, with the gear sequence. <clears throat> uh, so here's, uh, let's move on to the panel lines. The panel lines done on this model was done very well, I would say. Definitely mimics the, the real F-22 panel lines. Got the vertical stab there. Uh, this is the one section I did not paint, which is the exhaust nozzles. So the secondary kind of metal color uh, the gold, the bright gray, and then the triangle uh, silver shapes there were not, or were, was the original paint job. 
So I basically just masked that whole section off when I painted it. Uh, another small gripe I would say about the scale details of it is the gear doors. Uh, it does not come with tra tra traditional gear doors. It just has a plate mounted on the gear and then it just goes up with the gear. So it does not actually have functioning gear doors except for the nose. So when the wheels are up, the wheel is still visible from the bottom of the plane. It's just a small little gripe, but other than that, that's pretty much like my only complaint about the plane besides the nav light thing too. Um, quality. So I would say this is definitely one of Motion's best quality planes. Uh, the strength of the landing gear is very, very nice. Uh, I've seen lots of different people land this thing really hard and it uh, holds up pretty well. As you can see, it's got some nice little nose strut there. Of course, the ones on the mains as well. I did do the modification to the main strut spring, like the one they did in the Motion RC video. It did make a little bit of a difference, which makes a, a big difference. And that definitely helped. <clears throat> um, is it easy to fly? Um, I would definitely say without a doubt, yes. This is one of the easiest flying jets I have ever flown. It's very, very forgiving. It's got a very slow stall speed. Uh, the only issue about it not being easy to fly is uh, the visibility of it. Because I know some people don't like uh, gray planes because it blends in with the sky. But of course, you could always repaint it. <clears throat> um, what else? I have flown this without a gyro for a long time. Uh, I recently put a gyro in it like a couple months ago. It flew amazing either way, even without the gyro. I've flown this thing in crazy crosswinds, insane headwinds, and this thing, it, it's successful every single time. It never fails me. This is my like my bread and butter plane. If there's a, a day that the weather's gonna look bad, then this is the one I bring. Uh, performance. Of course, being easy to fly, it's a very, very great flyer. It flies very true. It's capable of all the fun maneuvers that the real Raptor can do, like flat spins, Cobras, Cobra spins, all that fun stuff. And I do have it set up that way, and we'll get into that here in a moment. So I do have Taylorons set up, just like the real flying one. So the elevators move with the ailerons, as well as I have 150% uh, maxed out rates and the control horns are as far as they can go. So we have lots and lots of throw. <clears throat> So we'll go ahead and show you how I got set it up in here. Get this off. All right. Let's see how I got it set up here. Uh, there is lots and lots of space. As you can see, you could fit some pretty large batteries in here as long as you can achieve your CG. That's where I have the receiver in there with the eight channel setup or seven channel setup, the eight channel receiver. It's very, very easy to work on, by the way, unless you plan to reroute the uh, servos from the wings into the fuselage without using the white ribbon cable. Because there's a weird tunnel. It starts here, it's so going to the fuselage, then it goes here, here, and then here. So it's like a little zigzag tunnel that you're gonna have to deal with. But other than that, it is very, very easy to work on. It was very easy to do the Taileron setup. I basically just unplugged it from the blue box and plugged it straight into the receiver. So it was a very simple job. Um, I am running a tail, more of an aft CG, so that way I can do some of the more fun maneuvers with it. And even with it being aft, it's still extremely stable and it feels great in the air. Uh, it also helps uh, make the landings feel really nice. Uh, I am about 160 millimeters back, 165, something like that. 
you can see I made a little mark with my fingernail there on that side and right there you can barely see it right in the center of the frame there so it's about 160 165 millimeters back something like that and to get that CG I did have to cut the foam that way I can stack the batteries on top of each other otherwise they wouldn't fit because the the inside there kind of narrows down it gets narrow as it goes deeper into the plane so I had to cut the foam right there right below the hatch and I did cut the foam on the canopy here oh, zoomed in a little bit too that far there we go I did cut the foam a little bit and I cut the little wooden piece right there so that would fit nicer So I'll show you all how I got it set up in the radio. I'll go to channel setup. So we are one aileron, one flap with a dual elevator since we have each elevator in its own channel slot. Uh, it's your traditional channel assign, except your elevators has one plugged into your channel three, which is your regular elevator channel, and then you have your second elevator into your next available channel, which I have a seven. It's right there, it's assigned elevator. And then this is the port assignment. So you have channel three is one elevator servo, and then channel seven is the other elevator servo. And then after you set it up that way, you will go to mixing and you will go to aileron and then set it to whichever elevator is not on the, the third channel or however you have it set up. <clears throat> so do it that way. Uh, I do have a flap to elevator mix in here uh, just a little bit on the full flaps. Half flaps, you don't really need it so much, but full flaps doesn't make a difference. Let's see here. So this is how I have my rates, uh, my low rates, which is whenever I'm flying very smooth and stable. And another thing to note is uh, because the gear is so narrow, like most of the fighter jets, I'm sure you've seen the, some of the fighters are prone to tipping wings on the taxiway. Uh, either on takeoff or after a landing and it ends, uh, ends up tipping the wing over. Uh, to help with that, um, I did lower the rudder rate down to 25% and it makes an absolute massive difference. Uh, whenever I taxi, I have it on high and then when I get ready to take off or land, I have it on very, very low. So that definitely helps with that. Uh, I think that is everything that I have set up. Uh, actually, let me show y'all something else. Uh, if any of y'all are running AS3X, I'll show y'all the gains that I have on here. So I have it on the knob, and it's usually stable about like this. I kind of go in between this to that, that or so, depending on how high the wind is. So if you're looking for AS3X gains, it uh, looks just about like this. Uh, other than that, I think that covers mostly everything. Uh, if you have any questions, just comment below and we'll get out to the field and show you all the flight. All right, here we are at the field. I am having to do a voiceover because the mic was having issues that day. So let's get started. Nice little overcast sky today. Checking all our surfaces and the switches, making sure we're good. Okay. So we'll take off there.
Here we're gonna get ready to do some inverted high alpha. Well, I've, I've high alpha a couple of other jets before, but doing inverted high alpha at this point, I would say is probably a little bit more harder to do than some others. Of course, practice makes perfect. It doesn't do upright high alpha very well. Uh, if you try to get a nose high attitude, uh, it will drop a wing or wing lock on you. So just be cautious of that. Uh, if you did want to do it, you could get like the slightest little high alpha attitude with it. But if you do anything more than that, then it will drop a wing. But inverted high alpha, it's really, really nice. So we're going to go ahead and do a cobra maneuver here. Yoink. Bring her back around. There you go, nice little cobra spin there. This, of course, is possible with the Teleron setup with 150% rates. Trying to do a flat spin here. There we go. And I freaking love this jet, dude. It just looks so freaking cool. favorite passes to do. This jet definitely has excellent vertical performance on ADS. Even with that dark gray paint on an overcast sky like this, the plane is surprisingly easy to see. At least for me it is. Navigation lights help. It is so forgiving on the landings. It's got that really nice little floaty feeling to it. Uh, in conclusion, this is by far one of the best 90 millimeter EDF jets I've ever flown. It's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, it's pretty easy to fly. If you're looking to get into EDFs, uh, I would definitely recommend this one if you have a little bit of prior playing experience. If you're looking to buy this jet, I would 100% say go for it. It's uh, one of the best on the market. Uh, comment down below uh, what you thought of the video. This is one of my first reviews, so I'm curious on everybody's thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching.